Hello, this is a tutorial to show you how to use filters in other image manipulation programs in combination with ArtRage. For example, here I have Buffy, which is split into two layers, the foreground layer with her picture and the background layer. And what you can do in, natively in ArtRage is if you go to Edit and Filters, there are some filter options here which you can use. For example, Adjust Layer Colors is quite a useful one, which enables you to change brightness, contrast, hue and color accordingly on the layer itself. You can easily use external tools to apply filters to your layers within the art range. And this is what I'm going to show you. For example, the first step is to export this into a different format that can be handled by other external programs. The program that I'm going to be used in conjunction with ArtRage to apply many different filters and different color corrections is going to be a tool called GIMP. It's the image manipulation one that I use all the time in combination with ArtRage and I found it's really useful and also in a bonus it's actually free and open source which is something that I always try and use if I possibly can help it. Okay let's do the first step then. So the first step we're going to go through is we're going to export this into a different format. Natively it's stored as a PTG proprietary format which is ArtRage's format but we want to convert it into a format called PSD, which is a common Photoshop standard, which many, many, in fact, probably just about every image manipulation, art, digital tool can import. Therefore, if we go to file, and I mean, this may not be self-evident necessarily, but in order to export it, you go into export image file which will give you a list of all the different files. And of course, along here, you have got all the common image files that you may want to export to. But right at the bottom, although strictly not an image file, is a PSD. Select that, and it automatically puts the name of your file, the former PTG file, and sticks an extension PSD on the end of it. And I'm just gonna save that into documents. ArtRage is now exporting this, which will export these layers here in a nice PSD format. Let's close that and go to Documents. And there we see a Buffy PSD. If I right click on it, we get an option Edit with GIMP. GIMP now starts up, loads in its stuff. This is not quite the latest version at time of publishing, but it's very close. But it is the version with all the large recent updates in. For example, when you first run it up, you can see that GIMP now does not run up with those annoying split windows, detached windows. By default, if you go to Windows, single window mode is now selected. Yay! It's about time because it makes, I think it, it would have put people off quite a lot by seeing the way it used to look, which was just not looking as if it was a professional tool in any way. And believe me, GIMP is a professional tool and you can pretty much do everything that Photoshop can do in it. Okay, if you wanted to switch or you want to start learning it, there'll be a learning curve with anything. But that's just the way it is. Okay, now we have GIMP loaded. You can see that we have layers on the right hand side here, which don't quite match what we had in ArtRage. We only had two layers in ArtRage, but we have an additional one called paper on the bottom. That's just conforming to standard PSD format in the fact that it needs to have a paper along the bottom, but we don't really care about that. We don't really care about that at all. We are only interested in these. Doesn't really make any difference because these two layers obscure the bottom one anyway. As you can see, it looks quite similar to Photoshop, especially now it's got this 
dark grey mode set by default, which is also a nice addition in the 2.1 update. Before it would look white and pretty horrible and the icons looked out of date and just not very professional. The layer is now selected and let's select one of these options along the top. We want to filter. We want to filter, oh in actual fact, let's filter, should we filter the background? No, let's do the foreground first of all. If we go to colors, you have an option here of a whole load of different color filters. And let's go through each one by one and give a brief demonstration. First of all, color balance. This is something I use quite often. You can color balance each different section of the color range. For example, midtones is initially selected and you can see here everything is set in a mid range which means that I can pull this dial from right to left and you can see the change is immediately apparent because we have this preview box selected. Similar to ArtRage of course, except that I found this is rendering it a lot faster and actually I can get a lot more done this way because I almost have instant feedback on an image of this size. As you can see you can get some quite extreme examples when you do that play around and this is what I do I tend to play around to see whether I can get something interesting if I want a dramatic change if you want to reset that just select reset range go to a different value range shadows and you can drag up drag down quite like that that looks quite interesting and drag up and just pull things around and see what might look quite interesting and let's try this one here. Ooh, that looks okay. And again, you can do something similar with the highlights, tweak those colors. As you can see, that is only affecting the highlight. If I wanted to accentuate or change the highlights, I can just alter that accordingly. Let's go for something a bit cooler. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's go for that. And you can have a split view as well, but I don't really see the point in that, to be perfectly honest. But it's quite an interesting thing. And let's select OK on that. Up here you have the undo history, enabling me to toggle between what it previously used to look like and the changes that I've made. OK, I'm quite happy with that. That's accentuated things slightly and let's go on to the next one. As you can see with GIMP the dialogue is very similar. You have a preview and a split view and you have reset, OK and cancel and then you have an option here which you can drag from left to right and again most of these things, most of these filters are going to be pretty self-explanatory and pretty much you can dive in and just have a bit of a play. I don't think I really want to change the temperature on it. I'll cancel that, but you can apply that if you want to. The next one, we'll go to Hue Chroma. As you can see, it's a very similar type of dialogue that we've got here. Drag from left to right. Um, but I'm not going to do anything with that. Let's cancel that. And Hue Saturation, quite a common one. It's something I use quite often. By default, Master is selected, which means that it changes it for all of the values. And hue is going to be quite a significant change, of course. ArtRage has something similar, but as you can see, the change when you drag it up and down is almost immediate in here. And I quite like the look of that, I think. So if I just go back to the middle and then push it to the right a bit, I think I'm quite happy with that. Do I want to desaturate? Maybe a bit. And you can also select any of these colors here to specifically modify colors. For example, the orange type color, I may want to just tweak a bit and push it from side to side. You're focusing on individual colors at that point. Gives you lots of flexibility. I think I'm happy with that. Let's do OK. And at the top right, we can see the difference that we've made so far. It's certainly different, put it that way. OK. 
Next one is going to be saturation. It's probably pretty self-explanatory. It's just a case of all oh, making it slightly more saturated. Um, I do quite like my art to be saturated. I'll select that, I think. And then exposure, again, self-explanatory, more kind of camera-based type of settings here. Yeah, let's stick that one in. Again, to a certain extent, I'm just going by gut instinct when I tweak these things. And what I also do at times is you can go up and down here and see the difference. But sometimes I take a copy. If you right click, you can duplicate layer and then actually have a play around with that. So you have your initial layer that you've imported in and then you have a modified layer maybe above it that you're playing around with. And I then take snapshots of different layers where I'm happy with different types of outcome. And then once I've done all that, I may just go through and review it and seeing which one is my favorite and go from there. But in actual fact, I think I'll do this now. If I now duplicate layer, of course, it's added that as add layer in, but I'm now going to start modifying my second copy I've got here. Let's go to colors. And now let's go to shadow highlights. Again, this is all pretty self-explanatory, just up and down, changing in this case, focusing on certain ranges of color value, white point adjust. Some of these filters are very specific to direct image manipulation related to cameras and things, of course. And levels. Again, it's just playing around with things. This is just a different um, type of concept regarding the dials that you drag around. You have a more of a graphical display of the way that the values are laid out within the image. It's not something I really use too often. And the curves. This is one that I use quite often and very similar to many image editing programs. By default, you have a value which you can modify. So initially there is no change, but if you start selecting along the line, you can create nodes of which you can manipulate the different values. For example, just twisting things around, you can see significant changes in the contrast settings here, for example, relating to value. And if I'm not really don't care about that too much, I can just reset channel. What I do like to do is I do like to go into the individual colors. Tend to select a couple of nodes like that and then pull things around, seeing what happens. You can really get some significant changes here. Really get some interesting effects. And let us go to blue. Let's put a couple of nodes on again. And let's drag around, accentuating the blue aspects of this image. You can have lots of fun with it. Something also worth noting is that you have presets. You probably noticed that through most of the pop-ups that came up. You can save your own presets here, but I don't really see the point in that unless you always apply a very specific template preset to an image that you've imported from ArtRage. For example, I don't know, you would just equalize the contrast or whatever it might be, but I don't really like doing that because every painting is different. Every painting may be, have its slight peculiarities when you import it in. What you really want to do, I think, is just be a human being and then tweak things accordingly. Okay, let's try that then. So now, as you can see, we've just tweaked that layer. If we make that layer we've just tweaked invisible, we can see the difference. So I may say, okay, I kind of like where I am there. Let's duplicate the layer again. And now let's move on to the next color filter. Invert. These are a bit more extreme now. Probably pretty unlikely to want to use that. And these linear inverts and value inverts are very similar. Then you come into 
some equalize options which are useful on occasion but again you get some quite extreme outcomes especially on paintings again probably guided more towards image tweaking which are coming from cameras rather than digital art um, yeah that's what all these are again it's just filters that can be gone through there's a lot of filters uh, in GIMP and a lot of these I don't really use they're probably quite interesting if you get down into them but I, don't, I feel that most of the time I just need to change the colors and then maybe I need to apply a bit of sharpening to bring some of the texture out coming from Art Rage but these can be played around with if you really want to do that. Once I've done color tweaking I tend to then have a quick look on filters and see whether I just want to tweak a few things. As you can see all these filters are pretty much self-evident. Blur, yeah, not something I really particularly use too often. Of course, I, I, I actually found that the Art Rage Blur worked pretty well and tend to use that one, especially for pushing the background slightly. For example, if we select the background, we may want to potentially push that back with maybe a standard Gaussian. Then you can see these values can be changed. It was already pretty blurry. I'm probably not going to see too much change with that one. Because with Art Rage you get a very painterly effect. But sometimes I want to bring the painterly out a bit more. And therefore some of these enhance the Unsharp mask I use quite often. So it's, as you can see, I'm just mousing over, it's sharpening image, which I do like to do. Because sometimes with blending and the way I do things, my images, my paintings can become a little blurred at times. I tend to like to apply a little bit of sharpening to bring things out. Look at that, that's quite significant. But you can see it brings out the painterly effect quite a lot almost too much so you get an almost Van Gogh like wow and uh, that's okay I'm not going to go through all the filters here again a lot of these are very extreme at times but as I said may, maybe the blur but maybe not the enhance are the ones I tend to use quite often therefore I think I'm pretty happy with all that so what I want to do now is I have all these layers including a couple that I've newly created I want to save it in PSD format. If you go to File and then you go to Overwrite Buffy PSD, it's going through all that. Now, what I want to do is I want to import these changes that I've made back into ArtRage. And there is a very good way of doing that. If you select ArtRage again, this is the original. If we now go to File and we go to Import image file and we select buffy.psd it's now going to you can see the one up there one buffy that indicates that we have one document currently in art rage and now it's gone up to two and we now see it as you can see we have the changes that i have made and you have those extra layers what we want to do now, and actually you can see the difference between the sharpening and the not sharpening. Okay, I think what I want to do is I want to take this layer here and I want to put it in to this. So I've done some tweaks. I've done some color tweaks. And I just want to copy and paste the layer in. Therefore, I'm going to go to the PSD and I'm going to go to Edit and Copy and it will then take a copy of the layer that you've currently got selected and copy it to the clipboard and then go to and select the original Buffy and all you can do then is you can just paste it which then paste it in it allows you to transform but by default you just select tick and there we have it so therefore if you toggle that one on on and off you can see that it's got all the color changes and all the enhancements that I've made to it and imported into ArtRage. Now the interesting thing to know is that 
Once you have imported this, this is just a flat image that it's imported. Therefore, this layer here is not just the image information, it has all the texture and bump map information onto it. So therefore, if you're then going to blend, use a palette knife or paint over the top, it would interact with it according to its algorithm. But this is just a straightforward image that's been imported, so it will be pretty flat. That's something worth just bearing in mind and a slight disadvantage of using this method. But there we go. This is just the end of a tutorial showing how to use GIMP to tweak and filter some colors and use it in conjunction with Outrage.